Welcome to a sold out XDS, which is a pleasure to say. Um, so I think in common with a lot of people, I got into this business through art. Um, and it didn't take long working with external partners around the world to realize that they were all better at art than I was. And it hurt a little bit. Um, but I found that even the most talented teams and the most talented studios fluctuate and dip with form. It does happen. And that's where I learned to love data and metrics because the right data analyzed the right way can give real insight and either confirm or challenge assumptions on what's happening. And we work in an industry full of assumptions. So it's very, it makes a real difference. Um, and I was fascinated at XS Ignite earlier in the year to listen to Su Sheng's talk on how Sony are approaching the use of KPIs. And with that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce an external supervisor with huge experience to run us through how Sony employ KPIs in their approach to their outsource relationships. Musashi Otaki, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining to this presentation. I am Masashi Otake. Um, first, I'd like to briefly introduce myself and the uh, uh, Sony group I work for. I work at Visual Art Service Group. In short, we call it VASG. Uh, that belongs to Sony Interactive Entertainment, and we provide game development services to Sony's worldwide studios. Those services include motion capture, 3D scan, art, and animation. You can find our names in many AAA titles published by Sony, um, only if you ever pay attention to their credit. But I know everybody don't pay attention unless your name is in there. But, but we are there and contributing to many great games. Outsourcing is one of VSG's services, and we have been helping many titles including annually released MLB series, and those announced at this year's E3, such as Days Gone and Spider-Man. We do have our own artists at VSG, and we outsource large volume of work to overseas by leveraging the core internal art team. Um, my job is to supervise the outsourcing to maintain the art quality and the cost efficiency as working closely with producers, project managers, art directors, and artists at worldwide studios, as well as those people at the outsource partners overseas. I position myself between dev teams and OS vendors to make sure the production are going smoothly on both sides. So this presentation include include the uh, both perspective of myself being service provider as well as being a service buyer. And hopefully it benefits everybody here today. The high level idea of the today's topic was presented at XDS Ignite early this year by my boss, Su Chen Wu. Um, he's VSG's manager of service and external development. Today, I'd like to share a bit more in-depth information on this topic about how we utilize the KPIs in our outsource managing. To begin with, I want you to take a look at these pictures. We all know that the, it, it's quite challenging to quickly train all of the artists to be super good. While we do our best and keep training the artists, I started paying attention to the simple and repeated mistakes that do not require high artistic skill at all, and those are ab absolutely avoidable, um, such as these you can see here. Like a, there's a holes in the polygon, and uh, um, the mesh is not following the proxy model provided, and simply very dirty polygons. Um, these simple mistakes are not project specific and very common in game art productions, so, so we call it generic issues. Let's see some more ex examples of generic issues. 
how long it's been since the normal map was first introduced, um, why making every single boat, tiny boat in the, ge in, in the geometry instead of baking that in normal map? Um, why texture density is not consistent matching to the required value, it's just simply not unwrapping the UV properly. Why not using the check tool we provided? Um, why not following the instructions in the document provided, which by the way, we spent time to make it very clear to the uh, artist. I think we all agree these are very generic issues and no subjective about it. Now let's take a look at one chart. This chart is made based on one OS package we sent out. The orange part is initially quoted cost to complete this OS package. By the way, I'm not allowed to share any dollar amount here, so I will just use the percentage here. I'm not quite sure how much profit margin each vendor is targeting, but let's say the profit margin is 10% here. Also, let's say the vendor adds 15% of buffer for potential revision cost. So this is the breakdown of the initial quote. After three months later, when this package was completed, our staff our stats was showing this. The red part is the estimated cost to fix the generic issues, those simple mistakes. And the blue part is the estimated cost to fix what we call subjective issue. I will explain about subject issues later. Um, so let's put the cost of subjective issues aside for now because we have much bigger loss caused by generic issues here. To me, this is not ignorable amount of cost being used to fix simple mistakes. The generic issues are not only eating up the revision budget, but also eating all of the profit. What do you think? I'd like to ask vendors owners here are you aware of how much generic issues your team is making and reducing your profit? If you want to maximize the profit, you must make sure your team make the generic issues as less as possible. Also, I'd like to ask service buyers here, are you aware of how much are you paying for those generic issues, particularly when the external cost overruns can you really afford to pay for the cost for those simple mistakes? I think we must do something about it. Eliminating generic issues is very difficult because it takes change individual artist mindset. But it is easier than training artists to be creative and highly artistic. In this presentation, I'd like to share with you how my team tracks and analyzes the KPI to send a strong message to the art team to maximize the speed of eliminating the generic issues and manage the cost overrun. So first, quickly, this is the definition of KPI in the dictionary. And now, why do we use KPI? Um, KPI is common, commonly identified by SMART. With the objective data, we do not have to rely on the memory that contains lots of subjective feelings. Let the team share the objective and visible trend of the performance to challenge the in inefficiency of the work as a team. Sorry, I forgot to show that. Uh -huh. So those are benefits. And the goal of using KPI is for buyers to keep the overrun cost as low as possible, for sellers to keep the profit margin as high as possible. Both buyers and sellers are expected to gather and track the KPI so that the data can be compared each other to make sure both sides are on the same page on their trend of the performance. If the trend of performance shows the gap between the sellers and buyers, there must be something 
the, there must be some large misunderstanding on the requirements or the scope itself between the teams. Now I'd like to share the main KPIs we use. Approval ratio, hours to fix the issue, and subjective issue ratio. Subjective issues are total opposite of generic issues. Subjective issues are difficult to avoid easily and highly dependent on the artist's skill set. Also, there are subjective issues that, that are simply not avoidable by the artist at the vendor. Those sub subjective issues are often caused by deaf team not being clear on what they want, such as their direction being not clear, their inconsistent artistic feedback to the vendor, or the requirements are not clearly listed on the document, scope changes, all of those things. These are the deaf team's uh, responsibility to avoid happening. And generic issue ratio, generic issue, issues are what I have been mainly talking about so far, and just simple and avoidable issues. By the way, even if the issue used to be a subjective one, once the issue has been addressed properly, it would turn to a generic issue. For example, even if issue used to even if the issue used to need highly artistic decisions, after the same subjective issues are repeated for a while, we expect the artist to make better decisions more and more and issue become generic rather than subjective. Another type of generic issues can be not being able to perform the art and technical fundamentals. These are something all artists must know from their schools or uh, training program provided at work. It's not really project specific. By the way, please notice that we use ratio rather than numbers, number of approval or subject issues or generic issues. We divide them by the number of reviews to get ratio. This way, index won't be dependent on the volume of work at the time so that we can purely compare the performance between any period, period of time or the between vendors. A little bit more explanation for subjective and generic issues. Um, this chart shows the distribution of the subjective issue and generic issues in one of OS packages. The PST mark each issue with the degree of one to six, depending on the subjectivity of the issue. The denser the blue is, the more subjective issue it is. And the denser the red is, the more generic issue it is. Some of you may feel that identifying the, where the issue is subjective or generic itself is actually subjective. But tracking the subjectivity in the degree like this, this will allow us to have more reliable KPI as needed in certain cases. For example, if anybody bring up the reliability of KPI data, I can show this chart and try to convince the most of the generic issues that is well over 50% we confidently identified as generic issues. And if the person wants, I can make the other chart excluding the scale three and four, where somehow it's neutral and it can be considered as between subjective and generic issues and just take that out, but the chart still make some meaningful information to us. To talk about the reliability a little bit more, the more data we gather, the more reliable the KPI will be. It's just common sense in the study of statistics. To give you a rough idea, one of the projects that was 400 men months in OS volume, and we made over 3,000 reviews, and also we found like 5,000, more than 5,000 issues. So it's quite big data. So next, how to gather data for KPIs. 
BSG has been using Sony's own outsource management software called Comms. We have integrated the KPI data gathering function into Comms so the reviewers can smoothly input the data for KPI with minimum amount of time at the same time doing, the, doing their daily outsourcing tasks. Com centralizes all outsource-related information for, from schedule, status, feedback, Q&A, and so on for each work phase for each asset. By associating the data gathering for KPI to every action that logged in Com's, we have virtually infinite, vari infinite variation and combination of KPI stats. This allows us to analyze the KPI in every way for every possible need. You can see the subjective degree right here that I explained earlier. And this is where the, uh, each reviewer picks the degrees of subjectivity. Without system like comms, there would be some limitations, but KPI data can be still gathered by asking reviewers to submit the report with a simple table to the project manager daily. Then PM gather those data and create a database manually to generate KPI stats. PSG was gathering data with this manual way for a while, but once we found the KPI is very useful, we have integrated it into comms. Either way, gathering data will not take too much time of your reviewers or QC team and PM once it's set. Now let's see some more KPI charts. This chart compares the four vendors throughout the long run project. We can see some significant differences between vendors. Some vendors take it seriously to reduce the generic issues while Others may not. Next chart, the, this chart compares the performance of two vendors throughout the length of the project. It's about two and a half years length. Both vendors shows the preferred trend of decreasing issues over the time. It's going down like this, so it's very good trend both vendors shows. The interesting is that both vendors show the spikes of the issue at the very similar timing, like here and here and here and there. Let's look into it more. So in this chart, I merged two vendors' performance together, and I'm going to overrate the final approval rate by dev team on top of this. We can see that approval ratio goes up right here when vendors start decreasing the number of issues. But we see here spikes up and our records show that what happened to those spikes in there At the first two spikes right here, there was a major change of requirement on the ambient occlusion map. So dev team needed to readdress to vendors how to gain the new look of ambient occlusion and any related issues around it all over the game. And unfortunately, we had very hard time to do so. And in the result, it took a long time, approximately like three to five months, to bring the approval ratio back up again because requirement was changing, going back and forth to find the right ambient occlusion value and the way to gain that. At the next spike right there, there was another major change of the requirement on the color map. However, at this time, dev team was well prepared and could provide to vendors very simple and straightforward inst instructions how to gain the new requirement very quickly. In result, it took only a month 
to get the approval ratio back up again like this. By the way, we see the offset between the um, spikes and the uh, spikes of issues and the approval ratio. Um, that's simply because um, there's a gap between the art creation, uh, art creating time and the final approval timing. So you may have to offset a little bit to, to see it right. Change of requirements or the scope change can happen and often not avoidable, unfortunately. Then the best we can do is to recognize the impact and be prepared for it so that the approval ratio will come back come back up as quick as it can be. Deaf teams should make detailed and clear documentations as quick as possible and let vendors know that major change of requirements are coming up soon. Upon the deaf teams notice in advance, vendors should make the art director's time available, thicken the artist's bandwidth maybe, or the tighten the QC process and the criteria. Next, let's see how ramp up impact the performance. The orange bars are the monthly volume of work we send to one of the vendors on one project. So it is ramping up in the first five months. I'm overlapping the issue ratio on top of the volume. The issue rate is number of issue we found per each review. So the lower the number is, we found less issues per review at each delivery from the vendor. In the, five, five, in the first five months, the ramp up was successfully done. As we can see, issue rate is going down as the volume of work goes up. Although we see the big jump of issue after that right here. In the last three months, the work volume ramped Lumped down a lot, and it was not really planned originally. The volume was supposed to be maintained as high as April, but the dev team had very hard time to keep up with preparing the package, uh, enough volume of work to the vendors. So in the last three months, the vendor was receiving very unstable amount of volume, uh, very unstable volume of work, at the same time, they did not know exactly when the work will be sent to them. Naturally, the vendor needed to release the artist to other project. And once the work comes in, some artists would be able to come back to our project, but others would not. So new artists in, in the project it makes sense the performance dropped quite a bit. The project was ended in July with low volume of work, but what if the volume needed to ramp up again towards the end of the project? It would have been pretty bad situation we were going into because we need to retrain the artist again and we're gonna, we, we're gonna be expecting a lot of issues a totally different topic. Uh, this chart shows the 80% of issues we found in one of the OS packages was generic issues. Right here, 80%. You may think the generic issues feature the simple mistake and straightforward to fix, are costing less than fixing those highly artistic issues. But please look at this. The chart just popped up shows the cost to fix the issues. You can see it, fixing generic issue which shares 80% of entire issues would cost 73% of entire revision cost. This means that fixing generic issue actually would cost as much as fixing subjective issues. Now let's look back how much the cost of fixing the generic issue can eat up your profit margin. So this chart is the same, same one I showed in the beginning of the presentation. If your profit margin is at 10% and if your expected revision is at 
both are easily eaten up by the cost caused by generic issues. Next, I'd like to share one simple case that vendors' cost was going over our contingency budget and how we managed it. One day, we received this email from a vendor towards the end of the One OS package. The vendor was claiming us for the change of quality and technical requirements and asking us to pay for the extra effort they made. It was 30% over our, uh, sorry, it was 30% over the initial quote and was not acceptable to us because we had some doubt on their performance during the package and our chart was backing up our point. Here's our reply to the vendor and the chart we sent. So we exposed this simple chart as making our point that majority of the revision were needed because of the generic mistakes. We did not receive any further objection to it from the vendor, and very soon, we have come to agreement with the vendor. So we have agreed to pay 10 mandates instead of what they have requested, 14 mandates. Although there were some subjective issues that were highly artistic in this package, we believe we did not require anything more than we have specified in the document and the quality sample we sent to them. Despite of VSG is right or vendor is right, um, the chart shows that's not really the point. The point is that there have been a lot of generic issues and that is eating the vendor's profit more than anything. The generic issue and the vendor's performance not only affect the vendor's profit margin, but also affect the dev team's internal cost. I'm sure we all have work phases and set review points for each asset. VSG always makes sure that each package or batch have the same group of assets that have identical work phases. This way, it's much easier to track and manage the tons of assets at once per package or the batch. For example, in this way, the certain work phase can be eliminated at once and skip the review for the phase as soon as vendors start performing well for the particular uh, work phase. Because every single review at each phase costs to the reviewers. When the vendors start performing well for certain phases, the chance is higher that reviewer is spending time to look for issues maybe that don't exist. Even opening the file itself over many assets simply takes time. So eliminating the fades are important to reduce the internal cost. Let's see a chart that shows the vendor's performance per phase. This chart, this chart shows the uh, one vendor's performance bi-weekly in the first one and a half months of the project. We had three common phases, modeling phase, UV phase, and the final texture phase in this order from the left. We can see the vendor is having hard time with modeling, modeling phase and UV phase. The modeling phase shows this zigzag line. It's not stable yet, so it's not time to remove, remove the phase yet. The UV phase shows the issues, issue ratio keeps going up. We obviously have major issue in this phase and we need to solve it together with OS vendor. In fact, I will make my lead artist call to vendors out the director and the lead artist as soon as possible. The final phase showing pretty good trends so far. We cannot eliminate the final phase, but we can be certain that the, everything will go smooth once the artists are trained up for the first and second phase. So just like this, we can track how KPI transitions in each phase separately to see where reviewers are spending their time. So our KPI stats have been convincing multiple internal and external partners. I hope you found useful in KPI looking at the chart I shared today. Generic issues are evil. It's not only waste for artists' time to make and fix them, 
but for reviewers to check and write feedback as well as PMs to deliver and receive the data, it wastes everybody's time. Changes happen, so it is important to be aware of that aware of the impact and to be ready for it by controlling the OS bandwidth schedule and adjust QC process in timely manner. The same, the ramp up and volume plan failure is not avoidable sometime. A minimum we should do is to inform vendors as early as possible and give them the new plan. Need to make sure your savings from retainer option will not be eaten by inefficiency by fixing the generic issues. Remember that it can easily cost more than 20% of the budget. Always aim to reduce the reviews. Um, some vendors may find it sort of annoying to deal with me um, with all of these generic issues and KPI chart and so on. Um, you know, like I'm too detailed or micromanaging. Um, but so far, I don't want to be the only guy annoying here. So I'm asking you guys to start using KPI to your internal and external team. And, but today here, it's a great opportunity to say in front of my current external, current external partners and uh, future partners that I consider external artists at OS vendors, they're as good as you know, our artists in the States. I've seen so many great artists out there when I was visiting the vendors. Only this disadvantage is there far away from us. But that this disadvantage cannot be used as an excuse for making generic issues. Because, because I know artists at vendors can do great artwork. So let's eliminate the generic issues and let's spend time and money on highly artistic issues that directly contribute to the art quality. And that's what artists really enjoy and passionate about. So nowadays, our sourcing should be the extension of the teams to overseas. Artists at vendors are well deserved to have fun making art, but that's only if they are not making generic issues. Um, that's all. Uh, thank you very much for listening.